Hi there, this video is actually from me and they wanted to know how you could put grayscale for a couple of objects in the scene and not just the entire scene in a post process. So that's what we're going to do after the, the, the fade. We are going to grayscale out individual objects. The last time we looked at this project, uh, we had like a full post process shader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the elements of that shader and I'm going to make a lit shader. So that's one that understands the lighting of the scene. Uh, and we're going to apply it to each of the objects in the scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this scene as uh, something else. So I'm just going to call this uh, per object um, shader example. Um, all the source code, by the way, for this is, is uh, in the description below. So um, on the main camera, we've got our post-process shader. So I'm going to open that up just now. So that we have a copy of it running in Visual Studio, well, sitting in Visual Studio. So this is our uh, shader here. I'm going to remove the post-process script from here. So I'm going to do remove component because um, we're not going to use that on the camera. So now when we run this scene, it's just going to show as the as the the yellow scene. Um, but we're going to apply that to each one of the cube, cylinder, sphere, and plane. So we need to create another. Uh, shader here. So this one I'm going to do create shader and it's going to be a standard surface shader um, and we're going to call this um, object grayscale. Okay so once we've got that working we can double click it uh, and we can see that we have these these objects in here. These the, this is our code in here. These are our objects. Good grief! So I'm going to get rid of the solution explorer and the properties because we don't need them. And that gives us a bit more uh, to deal with here. Uh, and we'll just make the yeah that should be good. Okay, so for the grayscale shader, what do we have up here? We have our main texture which is white, and then um, we want to have uh, the intensity. Um, we want to blend between the two. So um, what I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to copy this, this here, okay? Um, and it's not really going to make much of a difference to the actual scene because when we apply it, it's going to be exactly the same. So um, there's our albedo. So what do we have inside here? We've got our fixment. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we want it in here. So our intensity is our color, which is actually C, uh, which is that. And then we want this here because we don't want to use our color. We want to use um, we want to use our black and white intensity, and we want to apply that to every object in the scene. So the first one we're going to do it to is we're going to do it to the plane. So you can see over here that we have our plane and we have our plane mesh, we have our, our mesh render, and we have all this kind of stuff, mesh collider and all that kind of stuff. If you go to materials, you'll see that we have an orange material here. So what I want to do is I want to create another copy of the orange material. I want to say, um, copy that. Oh, it's Shift D, isn't it? Right, copy, uh, Control D. Is that let me do it? Yeah, there you go. I don't know why it wasn't let me do that. Uh, I'm going to call this um, gray orange. So gray orange is going to be our material. And then instead of the shader, uh, the standard shader, um, I'm going to choose my own shader, which is custom. So custom, and then it's object grayscale. So you see now that, that up here in the preview, uh, it's now grey. So when I run this, uh, run this here, we'll see that nothing has changed. Why has nothing changed? Oh yeah, because we haven't applied it to the plane. We need to apply it to the plane. So um, right now we've got our orange um, renderer. We've got our orange material here. So we drag and drop that into there. And you can see straight away that we have our, um, uh, our grayscale. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to turn these off and on depending on which ones that they are per object. So I'm going to have to create uh, every single one of these 
for our shader or we can apply a parameter to it and that's what I'm going to do in just a sec. I just wanted to make sure that we've got the, the right shader working here. So the way I've done this in the past is uh, I'm going to create a float in here. So I'm just going to say um, uh, blend, I'll call it blend, uh, blend and it is a float. Um, is it a float? I don't remember what it should equal 0, 0.0. Um, and then down here in our properties here, I've got float. Uh, I'm going to call that blend. Uh, and our blend is going to be between 0 and 1. Actually, it's going to be a range, isn't it? It's going to be range 0 to 1. Okay. Uh, so that's a range 0 to 1. It's going to be 0. Okay. So our blend is is going to be zero is the color and then our um the most it can be is going to be the the intensity sorry when we set blend to one that's going to be full on um grayscale okay so now what we do is instead of back back w there we've got fixed four uh, lerped equals lerp and then it's going to be c to intensity uh, band w and then it's going to be our blend uh, so lerp works exactly the same way as every other lerp it's a linear interpolation between one value and another value so in this case we're going to go from the color of the object uh, to the black and white version of it and we're going to use the blend as that that property so we run this and if we go into here uh oh, i've got this in maxima haven't i oops let me just do that change that down here so right now it is on zero and that doesn't look like it's right uh blend is zero hmm that doesn't look like it's working why doesn't it look like it's working should have gone from zero to one. Hmm. Oh, that's why. Because I need to take alert, and then I'm going to put that in the RGB. So now, if we run it, we now have our yellow. It's actually 0 0.6. So if I actually blend that down, you get to see that it goes to yellow, and then I can blend it, and I can basically take all the color out of it uh, for the individual part of um, the... Uh, object. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to back to our plane now that we have that set up. I'm just going to replace our orange back again. So that's our orange color there. I'm going to get rid of grayscale and delete that. And then I'm going to go into orange and then instead of the shader, uh, I'm going to choose custom and then object grayscale. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for these ones as well. So that one there, custom object grayscale. And the same for green, custom object grayscale, and then custom object grayscale. So basically nothing in the scene has changed, okay? But the cool thing though is I can now go to our cube, for example, which is the, the green one here, um, and I can go to our green material and I can change the blend. And so the blend is now going to be our zero or our one which is really cool so whatever our material is going to our material uses it's going to use the shader um, and so all we need to do is we need to attach those those materials there and we can do that inside our um, inside our, um, our game script so uh, okay so what's the best way to do this I think maybe I mean, we could do it with sliders on screen, or we could do it when we click an object. That might be an idea, actually. Let's do it if we, when we click an object. Okay, so I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to put this in the main camera, this, this script here, but the script I'm going to have here is... Um, what we're going to have here... It's going to be choose... Well, let's call it um, 
um, feed to degree, feed degree. There you go. That's a good good uh, callback for you. So I'm just going to have a public uh, material um, materials public void um, feed to gray index um, and that's all I need. I don't know why that doesn't like that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, do the feed. Yeah, because I can't call it feed degree because that's the name of the class. So I've got my public uh, there. And then for each one of these objects, I'm now going to have another class on them. Um, and it's just going to be um, um, I was um, click me. So click me is going to uh, override and then it's, oh no, it's um, on mouse up as button and then um, it's going to be public int index equals zero. Yeah, it's kind of redundant. Um, but uh, I'm just going to do a find here. This is not a good way of doing it, but it, it's it's too slow, but uh, we'll just do it for quickness in this one, this video here. Find object of type, uh, and it's going to be fade to gray. Uh, and then it's going to do the fade index. Okay, so it's going to find a, a game object of this type, and then it's going to call uh, this method called do the, the fade with this particular index. Um, and on here, I'm going to add fade to gray. And then the materials we're going to have is we're going to do it from the plane. So the plane one is going to be the, the first one. So that's going to be zero. And then um, we'll do it red, green, blue. So it's going to be red, green, and then blue. Okay, so orange, red, green, blue. Um, and then we go back into here. So do the fade, start coroutine um, materials. Uh, it's going to be do the fade coroutine materials index. Okay. And then we're going to implement that. And that's going to be I enumerator. Um, and then we're going to do um, float time equals zero while time is less than one. Um, and then we're going to lerp between those two values, which is fine because it's just going to be time. Um, and we're going to do material dot um, set float blend. And then it's going to be time. Uh, time plus equals time dot delta time uh, yield return null and that's going to give us our um, our loop and then at the very end there we're going to do um, one because at the very end we want to to fade that out so when we click on one of these objects it's going to do a fade for the individual object to gray uh, based on the material. So we don't even need the object, we just need the material. So our our cube, our cylinder, 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 our sphere and our plane, they all need uh, our click me object. And then the plane is fine because that's going to be index zero. So that's index zero. And then we've got our sphere, which is index one. And then our cube is index two. And then our cylinder is index three because that's our RGB. So if I have everything right, and it's very unlikely that I do because I keep forgetting to add things. I have my script over here, which is my fade to gray. I have a list of materials, uh, orange, red, green, blue. So when I click on the plane, uh, that's the orange one, so it's going to 
pass in, so when I go to plane here, it passes in index zero. And if I click on the cube, which is um, this one here, which is the green, it's going to click on index two, which I don't know if you can see here, index two, which is that one there. And if I go back to here, index two is indeed green. So uh, all I need to do is run it. And now if I click on, if I move that down to there, just make it a little bit bigger. If I click on the plane, it should fade to gray. And there you go, it is indeed fading to gray. And I'll do the same thing for the cube. And that's fading to gray. And I'll do the same thing for the blue. And of course, at the very end there is the red. Now, you can keep that information uh, with you um, so you know what the, the intensity is so that you can bring it back up again. So there was a game a few years ago, um, a few years ago, good grief, it's like 35 years ago, uh, called Whizball. And you played a wizard who had a cat um, uh, and uh, the wizard would go out and paint the world. It would get the wizard would get paint, and the cat would follow you around. It was called the catalyte because it was a satellite. The cat was in the ball. That's why it was a whiz ball. Uh, and basically, the world was grey until you painted it. And so you could implement this with a couple of shaders, um, and that would be the sort of start of of a whiz ball game. But yeah, that's it. That's um, that's how I would go around uh, using just the standard. Uh, render pipeline to um, shade things, shade individual objects to grey. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I do appreciate the, the, the time that people take to, to watch my videos. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to get timely reminders of when I put up a new video, then hit the old subscribe button and notification bell, which is just down, just down there-ish. Uh, and obviously, you know, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, if you liked the video and tell me if you didn't like the video as well, that would be nice as well. And don't forget to share on social media and, and things like that, because uh, that really helps the channel out. But yes, thank you so much for, for, uh, for, um, for watching the video, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.